Hello and welcome to the Newsdesk Sunday Guardian Roundtable. As Prime Minister Modi completes three years in governance, we are here to talk about his government and also the road ahead. Because most people are saying he's here not just for two years but for five more years. So seven more years of this government. What is the Prime Minister's roadmap? So joining me in this on the roundtable is Radhika Ramaseshan. She's a consulting editor with the Business Standard. We have Dr. Sanjay Baru. He's an author. He's a political commentator and a former editor. We have Shahid Siddiqui, an editor and also a political commentator. And Siddharth Vajrajan. He's a founding editor of the Wire. dot in. Dr. Baru, I'll begin with you. Take a look at the record of the past three years. You know, we've all been discussing that when Modi would come in, he didn't come in with any big bang reforms, but he would take what we call small incremental steps. What do you say of the, his steps so far? Well, when I look back on these three years, I'm now convinced that for Prime Minister Modi, the primary objective of his first three years was to ensure a second term. Mm. In other words, the objective was primarily political. And I don't think because the focus, as I've written in or, or very often, the focus in the first one year was not on the economy, either because they thought the problems with the economy were not as big as they later discovered them to be. Um, the foreign policy initiatives were essentially aimed at bolstering the prime minister's image essentially at home, uh, using the international image. So in my judgment, the first three years of the Modi government have all been about one objective, Congress Mukta Bharat in 2019, and uh, a second term for the BJP, because I think the BJP believes that this is a turning point in the Indian history, that this is not simply, you know, one election you win, one election somebody else wins. It's not ordinary anti-incumbency that then turns around, that this is actually a turning point. The Congress is in historic decline and you need an alternative to the Congress at the national level. So if you look at it from that point of view, then it's a great success because today everybody says after UP election that it's this you, you yourself said not two years but next seven years. I think they're there. Now what they do with it in the next two years and over the next seven years it remains to be seen because I think the economy needs, certainly needs more attention uh, than it has received. Saisa, what do you say about, uh, do you see him here for the next seven years? I can't say whether he'll be there for seven years, but what I can say is that his biggest success has been that in spite of not doing much, in spite of the fact that the economy has not done well, it, it, neither Sapka Vikas nor uh, Sapka Sat has been there, uh, he has been able to keep his image not only intact, but it has grown. And one of the reasons, as Mr. Baru said, was that the, there is virtually no one to challenge him in Indian politics at the moment. Indian politics, not only in Congress, but the left politics is in disarray. Mm -hmm. All the old leaders from Lalu to Mulayam Singh to, to Sharad Pawar, all are virtually finished or on the verge of getting finished. So there is only one leader there. Modi, by default also, he has succeeded, not on, only because of his own politics. So that way Modi has done very well, politically has done well in every other field. I, I, I have my doubts, I have, uh, we will discuss that uh, during the discussion, but, but a major issue today before him, he has won UP, all right. But if you are not able to keep your own people in check, mm. then I fear that 2019 may not be that easy. But this is very interesting, you know, so that nature abhors in a vacuum. So if the opposition is not giving the opposition, will he find it within his own party? No, I don't think that uh, there is any likelihood of a serious challenge to Mr. Modi within the BJP or the Sangh Parivar. Mm. I think that he um, is really an undisputed leader. And... Uh, the, the hope that some people nurture that a challenge may come from the RSS, that there is some difference between him and the RSS is also uh, wishful thinking on their part. It's not true. I will, however, resist the temptation to speculate about seven years mm -hmm. or another term because uh, 2004 is still uh, you know, fresh in our mind when uh, the entire media uh, yeah, argued on similar lines that there was no leader tall enough as Vajpayee or Advani uh, the Congress was in shambles. Um, back then, right now, we're at least acknowledging that Modi hasn't done much in the economy. Mm. The discourse in 2004 was that India was shining, right? right? And everybody predicted, and we know the outcome which came, which really surprised everybody, and above all, surprised the Congress. 
<laughs> who had no leader, they had to then produce, as uh, Sanjay has described in his book, how, how, the, how an accidental PM yeah. uh, emerged from that, right? So I would say, you know, there's plenty of, uh, uh, you know, uncertainty still left in Indian politics. But I want to elaborate on something Sanjay said, which is that the purpose of Mr. Modi's first term seems to be to get a second term. Hmm. And the way he's done it, he won the political fight, and how? In, in, the, in the 2014 election, decimated the Congress, decimated other parties. Uh, what he then began to do was to encroach upon the autonomy of other institutions, other sources where checks and balances traditionally exist in the Indian political system. So the judiciary, the autonomy. His very first decision was to undermine the autonomy of the TRAI mm. by, by changing the rules that govern the, the chairman of the TRAI to allow himself to have Mr. Nipin, the Mishra and PMO. Yeah. Right? He had an, this is his first that day he passed an ordinance. Right, so, so from then on, changing the way the Supreme Court, you know, trying to uh, change the way judges are selected, uh, attacking the autonomy of uh, universities, uh, any arena where there could be some kind of a challenge, he's taken care of that. Uh, he has gone, he has used the CBI, he's used in investigative agencies in much the same way that previous governments have done, perhaps even further, to uh, keep in check um, leaders like um, uh, Mamta Banerjee, even Mr. Naveen Patnaik in Orissa, uh, you know, uh, the uh, letting, letting off of Amit Shah from the Sarabuddin case. Uh, you know, so the, so the use of the CBI in a strategic way. And there's nobody to, to, to call out. The media is silent about it. Uh, so, so we've we, seen we, the CBI being used by... We were all we take it for granted. The, 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 difference being, the difference being that we were all... The headlines in every paper hmm. was the CBI is a cage parrot, right? right. In, during in the last two years of Manmohan's time, we all referred in our headlines to media as CBI as a cage parrot. Hmm. Please tell me one channel or one newspaper which refers to the CBI today in the same way. Whereas it's still a cage parrot, if anything, it's even more in cage. Right? So that's what is helping uh, Mr. Modi uh, propel himself towards the second term. Uh, and I think we need to be clear about all of these factors. Okay. Radhika? You know, the remarkable thing about uh, Modi, who I have been watching since 94, uh, 93 in fact, is how quick he is to learn from his mistakes. You know, when he got this 2014 mandate, if you remember, there was an image which struck all of us. Him flying to Delhi to take oath in an Ad uh, Adani plane hmm. and, you know, that Adani logo. Uh, logo was flashed, almost amounting to a surrogate ad. That was criticized. I mean, media was a little more unkind to Modi then uh, than it is now. So then he kind of quickly realized that uh, this didn't make for good optics and he should be a less care uh, he should be more cautious about flaunting his association with friends which is not to say that Advan uh, Adani doesn't continue to be his friend or he has not benefited from this government certainly then you had that uh, famous uh, monogrammed uh, suit of his you know so there was a certain um, arrogance a certain self-assumption about himself which I think got a big jolt when he lost the Delhi, when the BJP lost the Delhi elections against all expectations. And then Bihar was the second a big shock. So Modi then realized that he has to reconfigure his uh, politics and the dynamics and everything. And he's been fairly successful after that. I mean, until, of course, the UP uh, sweep. So electorally, yes, he's had a run. It's been a bit of quite a breeze for him. but. Uh, governance is a little different from um, winning elections and if you talk to bureaucrats privately they are not uh, very comfortable with this government for uh, various reasons they feel that uh, the, uh, everything is vested in the PMO and the other ministries barring uh, surface transport is the only ministry which is mentioned as something that runs on its own team the other uh, 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 ministries are almost dud ministries, so there is just too much control vested in the PMO and that may work to the detriment of uh, the government in the long run, I mean, I think. I mean, the long run meaning in the next two years itself, the uh, aberrations could unfold. So has Modi been able to distance? Is he still campaigning or is he also governing? Oh, he's certainly doing both. I mean, that's the whole point, hmm. that after Indira Gandhi, he is really the first Prime Minister who has be, is both a popular leader at a mass level mm -hmm. and completely in, in control of the government, right? I mean, even Vajpayee did not have this element of control okay. over his government because it was a, a, a real coalition in which there are autonomous ministries like in UPA. 
so when you have an Indira Gandhi kind of person, like a Narendra Modi kind of prime minister, then you are both a political personality and a uh, head of government at the same time. You know, so it's not a question of which is. But as I said, I think given the fact that this is now a historic shift in Indian politics, and I don't think 2004 parallel holds at all, because we forget the fact that in 2004 there was a Congress party. There was a Congress party in Andhra Pradesh, there was a Congress party in Madhya Pradesh, there was a Congress party in Rajasthan, there was a Congress party even in Uttar Pradesh. Today, they, and Maharashtra, where is the Congress party? So the past is no guide to the future. Uh, I, I therefore think that as far as Mr. Modi is concerned, he sees himself as the harbinger of a historic shift uh, in, in, the, in the dynamics of Indian politics. Mm. And so he will always be a political personality. But uh, as Radhika has just mentioned, he's a practical enough politician to know that unless you deliver some jobs, unless you deliver something on the ground before the next election, you know, this uh, the voter is not going to be always loyal to you because right. the voter is not ideological, right? Most mm. voters vote out of a sense of whatever they feel at the time of election. And therefore, he has to d deliver on the ground. And I assume that in the next two years, that would be his focus. That has to be his focus. What should be his priority focus for the next two years? Uh, economy has to be the priority. Job. The jobs have to be the priority. Because, uh, you know, ultimately, people voted for him because people were fed up of a, say, weak prime minister, prime minister who was not his own person, and people felt that if you will have a strong person at the helm of affairs, the economy will do well, you will move fast. This aspirational India, which voted for Congress in 2004 and 2009, was voting for Modi now. But now, on that front, I feel that Modi has not been able to deliver. Although, it's still the honeymoon is, is still on. Uh, the longest Even honeymoon <laughs> anybody ever had was... is. M Mr. Yeah. Modi, even Indira Gandhi didn't have that kind of honeymoon because Indira Gandhi, as you were uh, mentioning it after Indira Gandhi, he is the Prime Minister who controls both politics and, and the government. So I believe that if he is not able to, honeymoon I feel will be over now. Next two years will be the real test for Modi in terms of governance. He talked of minimum governance, we don't see that. We, he talked of delivery, we don't see that. He talked of uh, jobs, we don't see that. So in that case, and if, even on foreign policy situation, Pakistan, the terrorism, yeah. Pakistan, China, Kashmir. we have not been able to make a dent. It's all right, you know, Jappi, Papi is okay for some time. People feel very good about it. But beyond that, you have to show that where you have made your enemies, turn your enemies into friends and your friends into your allies. That I don't see happening. So next two years are going to be the real test, and then we will be able to see 2009 because already w one problem is that media media has always been the undoing of m great leaders so that you want to yeah no I would, I would just add that you know the, the Modi strategy which is as Baru says get reelected mm. centers around you know primarily being perpetually in campaign mode as you know he's identified secondly you know uh, doing everything you can to weaken an already weak opposition and using investigative agencies if, if, if that is required you can see very selective, you know, so I'm all for great investigations, you know, the CBI should go after Veer Badra, Karti Chidambaram. I would also like them to go after the people involved in the Maharashtra irrigation scam. That's not or happening. The scam. That's not happening. Or the Vyapam scam. That's mm -hmm. not happening because uh, they're either your own party people or they are people with an NCP that you want to protect because they're a future ally. Right? So there's, and the third is, the third leg of this is polarization. The selection of Yogi Adityanath in Uttar Pradesh was an admission two and a half years before the election mm -hmm. by Mr. Modi that I am not going to be in a position to deliver on any of my socio-economic promises to the electorate of Uttar Pradesh. So what's my, what's my step B, what's my uh, plan B? Plan B is that you have a guy like uh, Yogi Adityanath, who has zero uh, administrative experience, who's an intensely polarizing figure, a man against whom we have criminal cases, and who then misuses his authority as PM to ensure that those cases disappear, mm. right? So that's your plan B. And, uh, you know, I think as the non-performance of the government on the economic front, on the jobs front, becomes more and more apparent, closer to 2019, uh, all these incidents that we see in Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, you know, communal incidents, you're going to see, unfortunately, uh, an increase in these, the use of these now uh, in a more strategic manner. And I would say, you know, uh, uh, Shahid Bhai is right, create jobs, Mr. Modi. The second would be, please, for heaven's sake, maintain law and order here. In the, you know, don't allow, you can't have the excuse now that the, this is a state subject. The majority of states in this country are under the BJP's control. 
right? And you pride yourself on running a disciplined party. Mm -hmm. If Mr. Modi picks up the phone and tells Adityanath, I want this done, uh, Adityanath cannot defy him, or he better not, mm -hmm. right? Despite the PM enjoying that kind of unparalleled authority that we haven't seen since Indira Gandhi's time, right? We have such a lax approach and attitude towards law and order, you know, uh, and which leads me to believe that there is some method in the madness. You've been traveling UP also a lot, uh, you know, uh, do you see Yogi Adityanath here just for 2019 as a prop to polarize? Or? Yogi has not got any, forget a grip, he hasn't even got a toehold in administration so far. And, the, uh, and I would assume that both Modi and Amit Shah are trying to run the government because it's just too much at stake in Uttar Pradesh. I mean, getting all 73 seats back in 2019 is a very tall order. That's probably not going to happen. But even if they salvage, say, 65 or something, that would be good enough for them. So UP is therefore very crucial. Yogi, on the other hand, is extremely popular on the ground. I mean, you talk to the autowalas or the vendors, and everybody says that he's doing a great job. He's had the lalbatis removed from ministers' vehicles, and he's uh, he's uh, he's in. So I have mentioned Yogi that now he has gone in for the populist choice in UP rather than you know his. So Yogi will try to maintain that. As he did in other states. Yeah, he will try to maintain the populist uh, momentum until 2019. So I doubt if they will. Uh, replace him until 2019. After that, I don't know what happens. But the long and the short of it is, he doesn't seem like governance material to me at all. You know, it's uh, uh, BJP has other good choices in uh, Dinesh Sharma, Surya Pratap Shahi. They are not spoiled for choice or anything of that kind. But it's just that Yogi is popular on the ground. I, I do not see them tampering with Yogi until 2019. 2019. Okay, we're going to take a break. But after that, you know, with Prime Minister Modi, we can always expect the unexpected. So what is that what is that out of the box thing that he can do in the next two years? That's what you're going to focus on. Welcome back to the News X Sunday Guardian Roundtable. We are here discussing the three years of Modi government and also what's going to happen in the next two years. Road ahead. Dr. Baru. Is there something that he can do out of the box? You know, he's done demonetization for UP. What would he do now for the general elections? Well, I don't know if he's uh, started thinking about general elections already, but I, I do expect the unexpected on, on the economic front. I think we're going to see a massive campaign on disinvestment, privatization, uh, raising enough funds for government to be able to spend uh, in, in, in programs that will then be electorally popular. Uh, I do expect to see, you know, already this morning it's been announced that FIPB is going being shut down. So I think a, a major movement on the economic front is what I expect to see in, in the next year because I think there is a recognition that this is a move that needs to be made now in order to be then able to claim something for the government by the time of the election. Uh, on the foreign policy front, some interesting things are happening. I mean, this sudden relationship with Germany following an earlier investment in Japan uh, because of the entire uh, redefinition of international politics after Trump uh, gives me the impression that we are now entering a very interesting new uh, phase in Indian foreign policy with what I call the middle power uh, alliances. Uh, Erdogan was here from Turkey, Prime Minister is going second time to Germany, uh, the J Japanese Prime Minister will be coming here. So a, a coalition of middle powers because the United States has become unpredictable. As long as Trump is there, uh, it will remain an unpredictable country. China has become difficult. Uh, and Russia is caught between the US and, and China. And therefore, uh, its focus is entirely bet in, in that triangle uh, and not on India. So what does India do, given this uh, situation? I actually expect to see uh, interesting new initiatives on the foreign policy front. Interesting initiatives on the foreign policy front. What else can he do? I don't know what else can you do because uh, everything is not in your control. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to do a lot of things, but uh, you can't do everything you want to do. But I if he has to do anything, he has to do now. The biggest thing he did was, uh, did was demonetization. Demonetization did not do as much harm as pundits were uh, predicting. But it has not also benefited much. The economy has didn't get the boost. You may get more uh, uh, taxpayers, but that doesn't help. That doesn't create jobs. That doesn't bring in the money and the investment. So investment, as was expected with Modi, has not come. So what he what he has to do has to do in next few months. If he doesn't do in next few months, 
then you don't have the time to really implement your economic policies on the ground and give the impression that economy is moving moving fast infrastructure is developing the jobs are there industry is growing Th that has to be done that should have happened a uh, year back second year all the difficult decisions should have been taken mm -hmm. but if you take some of the difficult decisions now then I, and uh, con controversial issues you take up then you will have a uh, you may you are taking a risk so i am not i don't know what exactly he can do but he is capable of bringing a rabbit out of his uh, pocket not his head but what kind of rabbit would it be and rabbit will so be helpful to you or it will yeah, make you run. Yeah. <laughs> Siddharth, any words on the, what he could possibly, you, know, you said what he should do, you know, all valid points, law and order, economy, foreign you, policy. You know, I'm not optimistic on either the uh, economic or the foreign policy front. Uh, I think Sanjay, uh, Dr. Baru raises an interesting element to what is unfolding. Mm. But the harsh reality is that in the past three years, uh, not entirely for Mr. Modi's, you know, fault. method of leadership or his fault, but our relations with uh, pretty much every country or major power uh, has either worsened or not improved beyond what it was or the trajectory it, alre it already was on in 2014, right? Germany, Japan, things were already on an upswing. With Russia, with China and Pakistan, things are worse. Uh, with some of our neighbors, things are either on an even keel or worse. Uh, so I'm not sure on the foreign policy front, A, what kind of rabbit he'll pull out of a hat, and secondly, whether this really matters to the electorate. People want jobs, and it's a little late in the day, given that you haven't created these jobs over the past three years, for you to now, uh, even the kind of investments or the Let's assume that a huge amount of money is raised through uh, this investment. Uh, you know, to invest them, to have that money put in job creation, you know, there, there's a lead time involved. Uh, so I think that you know, the, this, uh, this vast youth bulge that he promised, made promises to and he hasn't delivered will have to be fed something else. And uh, that's where I, I worry about the, uh, you know, the, the violence and the, the kind of the mobilization around uh, nationalism and all of these kinds of things. They serve a certain strategic purpose. But I wouldn't rule out, you know, Mr. Modi, you know, if I pluck an idea out of the hat, if he were to go in the next election mm -hmm. and come up with, a, with some kind of, you know, ultimately some kind of symbolic gesture, vote for me and I will formally change the name of India to Bharat in the constitution. Nobody can oppose him on that, mm -hmm. right? So it, it doesn't really change anybody's life, whether, you know, what the country is called in the constitution, but he may say, I'm standing up for national pride. So I think that he will rely more on these kinds of symbolic gestures. Something like uniform civil court, they may come up with, which may again polarize more, which yeah. won't really affect anything, but it, it will help him politically. Which also Think, explains but, yeah. all the social oh, steps uh, like that can be taken. Business about you to mention this uniform civil code which impinges on uh, the rights and interests and security of the minorities. Already in Uttar Pradesh, you're hearing something very, um, uh, 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 I mean, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, people are saying that, you know, Muslims have quietened down everywhere. Bilkul kuch nahi bol rahe hai, shant hai. So you need uh, the other, so to speak, to in order to mobilize the Hindus is getting, uh, you know... Is How do you polarize the other? Reaction yeah. from Muslims and reaction no, will no. come... Polarization will stay only if you keep adding to it, if you keep stoking it, if you keep fueling it. Yes. Suddenly, I think the BJP finds that it's uh, not all that easy to keep up that momentum. You know, so I don't know if... Of course, on the other hand, in Gujarat, uh, come an election, I mean we've all covered elections in Gujarat, and people they were able to about joblessness, up. about uh, SMEs doing badly, agriculture do, uh, not doing so well, but come an election and they always vote on Hindu-Muslim yes. alliance. So has he created a political Hindu constituency in the rest of the country? I think that will be put to test in 2019. Hindu constituency which over, uh, overrides the, all the caste barriers const Constantly, uh, one time in is fine. Which is so, so, so in the uh, that's where I fear election. that this, the, things the like uniform civil code or they say Article 370. No, they need a combustible yes. issue to keep to, that to constituency keep it, uh, yes. so going. Something like that will be pulled but out of the hat. Everybody talked about if not uh, Modi's hat, then Amit Shah's hat. Industry investments and so on. I think you know the BJP is giving a lot of importance to agriculture because suddenly the Madhya Pradesh model where, uh, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, which is supposed to have registered a high agricultural yes, glow, yes, growth, yes. is being held up as a template which other states should follow. It's happening in Maharashtra. Devendra Fadnavis, contrary to uh, expectations, is focusing uh, uh, single-handedly on agriculture. 
he's supposed to have revived water bodies and so on, you know, and uh, Vidharva, he's trying to pluck Vidharva. That was also the Gujarat model. That's also Gujarat the Gujarat model. Gujarat did well on agriculture. Yeah, uh, you, in Uttar Pradesh, water. again, sugar cane, wheat, okay. all these are getting important. So I guess they think that uh, whatever Philip comes to the economy, big or uh, not so big, Whichever they way. come from agriculture. Okay. Well, on that note, I'm afraid we run out of time. But the takeaways really are with Prime Minister Modi, expect the unexpected. He will do something to get that vote back again. And also the opposition needs to get his act together. Otherwise, it will be almost a walkover for Prime Minister. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching this show. We'll see you again same time next week.